In ancient India, children were placed in the care of an enlightened teacher, a guru, who was qualified to look after the material, emotional and spiritual development of the students. These schools were known as gurukulas. My name is Sanaka. I was raised in Iskon gurukulas, in Italy and in India. I have mixed memories about my childhood. In many regards, it was exceptional. I forged lifelong friendships and I was introduced to a rich spiritual tradition. As a child, I also witnessed different forms of abuse on a regular basis. Nowadays, many believe that child abuse is a dark chapter in the distant past of the Hare Krishna movement. So the first problem regarding the children of ISKCON after 1977 was that many of them were being molested or abused, mistreated, or they were being deprived of food and medical equipment or just basic necessities. And that now there is an effective child protection system in place. Although some progress has been made over the years, in many regards the current policies are still inadequate. In the Hare Krishna movement, political influence and spiritual authority often rest with the same people. This monopoly has created conflicts of interest that have frequently led to a misuse of power. Generally, the need to be respectful of the position of these leaders and the sentiments of their followers has been given priority over the need to protect children. This, in turn, has fostered an environment where accountability has been problematic and children have suffered. The GBC controls the Child Protection Office. Effectively, we have a scenario where prosecution, judge and jury are all working for the same team. The current system has little room for independent revision, appeals or scrutiny. And consequently, credibility. My name is Prem Sagar Das and I came to Mayapur Gurukul in 1987 December and I stayed until 1993. During that time, which was around five years, Bhakti Vidya Purna Swami was the principal of the school. Yes, uh, there were several times that Maharaj uh, beat physically um, the Gurukul children during my time. Maharaj was famous of carrying a bamboo stick that you could bend it and it, it looked like a whip. Maharaj uh, gathered everybody on the Hanuman house and older and younger boys were witnessing this um, punishment and he requested every single boy, there were three of them, every single one to bend upper and hold the back of their ankle. He did that, Maharaj used his bamboo stick as a whip to hit each one three times. The mark that left on that um, 
on that uh, hit by the whip, I was very, I mean, it, it took days to fade away. It was great. And, you know, some, some, I, so one of them had some blood coming in. Everybody were completely uh, uh, flabbergasted to see Maharaj's action. Yeah. Okay, regarding, regarding the sexual abuse to children, I remember clearly that um, in few occasions, may, or many occasions, uh, Maharaj was approached by the student mentioning that they were being uh, molested, okay? Um, by older boys and Maharaj just couldn't do anything about it or he will question I mean this particular case which I recall exactly he questioned the boy to do, asking them how did he knew that he would be molested now of course the reply would not be very clear from the, from, from, from the children so uh, basically he Maharaj did not do anything about it did not accept it and kept Filing the case. That's it, because well, not to your point, you're 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 saying that there were 16 boys. The report indicates, well, definitely more than 30. You're saying it was consensual and of the same age, except maybe in one case where there was a re something. And this 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 report involve it describes just rampant, rampant force of violence. You know, from older to younger, in, in multi generational sexual abuse. In headmaster, because the report recommended that he leave, he left. Follow the history. Like six weeks later, he's back in the same position. After the investigators, you know, went, went away. He's not aware of half of a percent of the severity of what happened, of how children were <coughs> brutalized under supervision. At, at the same time, he has a signed letter from 91 saying that um, he read the report closely. So if you read the report closely, um, I can, if you read the report closely, it's not something you'll forget in this lifetime. Bhaktivedya Purana Maharaj won't serve in any capacity that is directly connected with children until January 1st, 2002. After that time, he may serve in a non-managerial and non-administrative capacity connected with children if the ISKCON Education Ministry agrees that he may do so. Bhaktivedya Purana Maharaj may not at any time assume a managerial or administrative role in ISKCON and especially not in connection with children. The current management of Bhaktivedya Purana Maharaj's school is made up almost exclusively of his disciples. So even though Maharaj may not look after the day-to-day -day management of the school, Effectively, this arrangement gives him far more managerial influence than he should be allowed. In a letter sent to me on the 15th of September of 2011, Champakalata Mataji, the CPO director, confirmed that the Ministry of Education encouraged Bhaktivedya Purna Maharaj to resume his involvement with children. Thus far, it has been established that the Education Development Ministry has encouraged Maharaj to contribute to the training of educational staff and curriculum development, which would be in line with a non-managerial and non-administrative capacity connected with children. At the time, Shesha Prabhu and Lakshmi Moni Mataji were members of the Education Ministry. If we look at their history, we will find that both of them have a track record on child protection that is concerning. Hare Krishna, my name is Lakshmi Moni Devi Jasi and... Hare Krishna, my name is Sesha Das. I serve as the ISKCON Minister of Education uh, on the uh, Governing Body Commission of ISKCON. In a phone conversation I had with Lakshmi Moni in 2008, she acknowledged that during the 80s and 90s, she physically and psychologically abused the girls that were placed under her care in Lake Huntington and in Alachua. Many of her former students confirmed these facts. 
Lakshmi Moni has never been made accountable for her past wrongdoings. Today, she is honored as a respected teacher. Shikshya seemed just like his goal was just protective of Bhakti Vijayan Kornaswami. And then I remember he, he yeah, he, he wanted me to apologize because when I interviewed Bhakti Vijayapurna Swami, I didn't announce at the beginning that I had these the report from 91. I didn't announce that at the beginning. So, so I guess I, I was being concealing. Um, I considered it good investigative process. Uh, yeah, like obviously. <laughs> so I, I was just kind of, and as, as far as like the clear lies and deceptions from Bhaktivedya Purnaswami, yeah, like didn't seem to be a concern for Shesha. Shesha Prabhu has supported two other offenders besides Bhaktivedya Purnamaraj. Gauri Das and Varkishwara Pandit. In July of 2002, the CPO found Varkishwara Pandit guilty of having sex with a minor. During the CPO review of his case, Shesha Prabhu acted as his defense attorney. In February of 2015, I spoke to a graduate from Maharaja's Gurukul. He described an incident that took place in 2012, where AK, a boy aged 17 or 18, sexually abused a nine-year-old child. At the time, Madhava Garanga was the principal of the school as well as the head of child protection in Mayapur. He dismissed the episode as a case of child sexual exploration. Both the victim and the perpetrator were quickly removed from the school. It is alleged that recently there have been more similar incidents in Maharaja's school. Child sexual exploration is when the sexual play is between children of a similar size, age, and social and emotional development. At present, ISKCON does not offer any form of support, assistance, or counsel for child abuse victims. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So my name is Sri Radhe Dasi. I'm a disciple of His Holiness Indra Swami Maharaj. Uh, I also oversee the girls' gurukula called Sri Anasuya Vidya Mandala. When Sri Radhe became the principal of Bhakti Vidya Purna Maharaj's girls' gurukula in Mayapur, she was 19 years of age. She had no teacher qualifications or experience. The CPO has carried out two investigations on the girls' school of Bhaktivedya Purnamaraj. The first was in 2007 and the second in 2015. The 2007 documents states that Bhaktivedya Purnamaraj was pumping water for the girls while they were bathing naked and that he massaged them while they were semi-naked in their underwear. The 2015 report reads, Based on the above statements, there should be zero tolerance of Sri Radhe ever teaching or caring for children, ever again, effective immediately. Both the 2007 and the 2015 documents state that Sri Radhe and Bhaktivedya Purnamaraj regularly spend extended amounts of time alone. The report says that students have walked in on them behaving in a frivolous manner and indecently dressed. <laughs> 